Okay, so in this lesson, let's talk about actually building our set with Setlist. Now, this is an incredibly simple, easy process, um, thanks to the way Setlist is created and configured, um, and again, makes it really, really easy to manage uh, lots of songs in a set. So let's take a look at how to do that. Uh, so I've got my plugin loaded in here. Again, if you uh, don't know how to do that, make sure you check out the previous lesson to figure out how to do that. Uh, I'm gonna click Open Interface, and what you're gonna notice on the left here is every single one of the songs in my set that I have, okay? So I'm using, again, as I mentioned, uh, this full song set from a uh, live album recording that I did a couple years ago. And every single one of these songs has a locator uh, with a name added to it, okay? So I just added a locator, added a name. And as soon as you do that, it, pop it populates this full list. So I'll just show you, for example, I'm not gonna add new content. But let's go to the end of my set here, add locator, and we'll just call this outro. Okay. As soon as I go back into set list, you'll see we have our outro locator added there. So that's super nice because it updates in real time. It pulls that content in real time, which is great. Now, one thing you'll notice, notice when you look at this full list, the, the, the song titles are not added based on uh, their location in your Ableton set. Um, they are organized in alphabetical order. So this makes it super easy to find songs that you're looking for, uh, especially if you have a massive you know, collection of songs and, and a live set, you can go and find your songs and pull them from the full list, which is great. So let's uh, take a look at those, uh, at building a set list. It's super easy. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start with this song here. Um, I'm just gonna click on it. And then I'm gonna click this add to set list button. And you see that moves it over to the right hand column. Um, let's just add a few more songs here. We'll add our intro drone. Uh, let's add uh, this guy, add to set list. Now to do my additional songs, we'll talk about this more in a moment when we um, actually add in uh, a MIDI controller. Uh, these buttons can be MIDI map, but for now I'm just gonna click down, right? To go to this song, I'm gonna hit add to set list. I'm gonna go down one more, add to set list. We'll go up. Um, do we have this one in? No, add to set list. Let's do one more. Let's go up here to this guy and we'll do add to set list. So with those buttons, I can really quickly navigate. I can just click immediately on a song, boom, add to set list. And that adds it over here to our set list. Now what that does not do, it does not actually go and move those songs around in your Ableton set. And so um, you have to be aware, and I'm getting a little ahead of myself, I apologize. When we talk about using this live, you've got to stop after every song or add a auto stop. And that's a feature specific to set list that we'll talk about um, after every song. Uh, because if you just press play on your Ableton set and play through, it's gonna play with the content that's, that's um, the way your set is built. Um, if you are using set list here, then again, you've got to basically press stop at the end of every song or, or add an auto stop. We'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. Again, I apologize for getting ahead of myself. Um, let's, I'm going to show you a couple of other things here in the set list before we wrap up this lesson. So I've got my set list built. One thing I noticed though, is I added my intro drone as song three. Um, I actually don't want that. So what I'm going to do is click on this. I'm going to click move up to move this up to be the, the top song. It's the very first song that I have listed here. Um, and that's, that's perfect. Let's say we want to take running. We want to move this down. Uh, and then I found out last minute, um, that Lord, I need you. We're not going to do. So what I can do similar to, to over here, how I click this up and down button, let's click up again. This could be MIDI mappable. We'll talk about in a moment and let's click remove. And that removes this from this set list. Now, again, as I started to get into, and I stopped myself, I should have stopped myself earlier. Uh, there's a few other specific things you need to know, uh, about actually using this live. And we'll get to those in a moment. Um, but there's, uh, one small thing I want to show you really quick, uh, that you might notice particularly, actually I'll show you over here in my full list. I've got this one minute, two minute section here. These these are actually subsets of this intro drone. So what I want to do in our next lesson is talk about how to add um, what uh, what Setlist calls invisible markers, right? And these are locators that are not going to be seen in Setlist. So let's talk about that, and then we'll talk about using Setlist actually live in a live performance uh, scenario.